All right, hello. Uh, I'm Rhett Elaine, a physics blogger at Wired Science Blogs. Physics. That's who I am. And uh, so I saw this Veritasium video on the. Uh, there's two bullets, uh, or a bullet hitting a block, and the block flies up. And so the the simple situation: you have two blocks. Let me see if I can get. I should have had a prop. Let's just use this as a prop. Okay, so here's the first block, and it's hit with a bullet right here, and the the. The bullet gets embedded in the block and it goes up. And the second one has the bullet hitting on the side. And so the question is, which one goes higher? Well, if you hit on the side, it's going to spin. And it turns out that they go the same height. So here's the, uh, the, the picture showing the two, uh, the blocks. Here's this is the spinning block, and that's the one hitting the middle, and they go the same height. So the question is, why? Why do they go the same height? And why does one apparently have more energy than the other? Because if it's, if it's moving up and they go to the same height, they have the same potential energy. But the other one's spinning, so they have more have rotational energy also. Okay, so let me see if I can explain this in a video, uh, and then I'll make a, a blog post because I like to write. But people like videos too. So let me write, uh, show this uh, first. Why are they the same speed? after they hit. So that changed the problem a little bit. Instead of going up, uh, this is, these are two blocks on ice. And so I don't have to worry about how high do they go. I just want to know how fast they're going after they get hit. So here I have the bullet hitting a block dead on the center. The bullet gets embedded. This is, this is after. And it moves off with some speed. Now how would I find that speed? Well, if I take the bullet plus the block is my system. Then I can use the momentum principle. It says the total force on that system is the change in momentum over change in time. Now, there's no net force on it. On the bullet pushes on the block, but there's no net external force. So this says the change in momentum has to be the zero vector. So whatever the momentum was before, I call it P1, is the momentum afterwards, P2. Uh, so before I have mass of the bullet times V1, and then afterwards I have uh, the mass of the bullet and the wood times V2, and those have to be equal. Since this mass is much larger, the new velocity is going to be smaller. Momentum principle, this is an inelastic collision. It's inelastic because the two things stick together and have the same velocity. But this works really as long as there's no external forces, the momentum before and after would be the same. Okay, now what if I shoot it over here and hit it at the lower edge? Okay, the bullet has the same initial velocity and the same mass. The block has the same mass. So the equations look the same. There's nothing that takes into account the rotation. So I get uh, the bullet hits it. The final velocity is going to be the exact same thing. Same mo initial momentum, same final momentum. So V2 is the same whether it hits on the side or the, or the edge. That's what the momentum principle says. Okay, but you're saying, but wait, wait, how can they be the same? Energy, 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 right? Okay, so let's look at the first block. Let's look at work energy. If again I take the bullet and the block as my system, then I get work is a change in kinetic energy, translational, plus a change in kinetic energy rotational plus a change in internal energy. So here, kinetic translational energy is one half mv squared. Translation, I mean rotational kinetic energy is one half i omega squared. Okay, so uh, this is mass times velocity squared. This is the moment of inertia depending on the shape and the mass and the size of the block. And this is the angular velocity. Okay. Um, so the, the work is zero, since there's no external forces on my system. So that means right here, for the first block, dead center block, change in kinetic translational, change in rotational energy, plus change in internal energy, which can be lots of things like the thermal energy, um, configuration energy. You know, you have to pull the block apart to get that bullet in there. Um, that's in there. So for the first block, it starts off with angular velocity of zero, ends up with angular velocity of zero. So this term is zero. 
So for the first block, let me just write this as, I'll call it block one. I get zero equals k translational two minus k translational one plus delta i internal. So afterwards, it's not moving as fast as it was before. Okay, It has a greater mass, but this is going to be smaller than that. And so what that means is that there has to be an increase in thermal energy or something in the block. There's an increase in energy in the block in order for the total change in energy be, to be zero for the system. And that's block one. Now let's look at block two. The only difference is that I do have rotational kinetic energy. The initial kinetic rotational energy is zero, so I get zero equals kT2 minus kT1 plus k rotational two minus initial rotational, which is zero, plus delta I, delta E internal. This is exactly the same as that because it depends on the mass and the velocity. These two things are the same. So I have an extra positive term in here. That means that the change in internal energy for this case is less than the change in internal energy for that one. So if it were just a change in temperature, a change in thermal energy, this block would get hotter than that block. It's not just thermal energy, but if it, if it was, that's what it would be. So if you think about it in terms of damage, there's less damage done to this block. The, the bullet doesn't get embedded as far as it does in here. And so there's less energy done in moving that bullet in there. Because as this bullet hits, it starts to turn. So it, it, uh, it doesn't have as much, it's not able to get embedded as far. So the point is that energy isn't out of line. It's energy still conserved. Um, although this one is, has rotational energy, it has less other types of energy. Now, what if you wanted to get rid of the internal energy? You could do that. You could change this to a completely bouncy situation where the bullet doesn't embed in there. Uh, and then in that case, they wouldn't go as high. Because in this case, the, uh, the bullet would bounce back that way, this bullet would bounce back that way, and so, well, maybe they would still go as high. I'm not, no, they wouldn't, because the bounce back velocity wouldn't be the same in that case. Um, and then they, they wouldn't go as high. So the sticking in there is probably important. I'm not actually sure now. But, okay, so there's my answer. Energy still works because the change in internal, internal energy is different.